Welcome to the last main video of the course to finish your website. We are going to edit the mobile layout for each page and function. Create a pop-up to encourage visitors to contact you. Create a unique icon for your website. Optimize the file size of the images for faster loading. Clean the media library. Create cookie consent and privacy policy. And do some final cleaning to have your website ready. Let's go. Let's open Elementor Editor. To see how the page looks like on your phone, we can open the responsive view from the bottom of the page. Now a new bar appears on the top where we can change the view between desktop, tablet and mobile. Depending on your screen size, it's a good idea to reduce the zoom level to match the size of a phone screen to get a more accurate idea how it looks. Usually the viewport is more narrow than on modern phones, so we can stretch the width a little. To start editing the page, let's begin from the header by clicking it. We want to have the so-called hamburger menu button on the same row as the logo. This is easy to do. Click on the column button on the top left corner and from the layout settings, change the column width to 50%. Let's do the same for the menu and type in 49% to make sure that they fit on the same row. From the style tab, we cannot change the alignment. So let's click on the menu widget first and then from the content section under mobile dropdown, change full width to yes. And then we can change the text align to center and finally change the button alignment to right. Now we can test the menu by clicking on the hamburger icon. The menu opens on full width and the text is centered on the screen. Looks great, so let's save the changes. Then we can go back to edit the home page by clicking on the edit page ribbon. From the hero section style tab, we can change the layout settings of the background image. The image dimensions make it difficult to fit on the vertical viewport. While these settings apply only to mobile, some of the settings affect all layouts. If we go to change the gradient overlay settings, it's going to change the desktop layout too. Instead, we want to copy the URL of the background image and open a new tab and type in photop.com. This is an image editor exactly like Photoshop but it works on the browser. Let's open one more tab and paste in the URL of the background image and hit enter on the keyboard. Now we can drag the image directly to Photopea from one tab to another. Drop the file inside the box and in a couple of seconds, Photopea loads it up. Here, we can adjust it to fit the mobile layout better. First, I'll go copy the gray overlay color code we are using on the hero. Create a new layer in Photopea by clicking on the layer button on the bottom right corner and then clicking on the top color on the left toolbar. Let's paste in the gray color code here and by holding down the mouse button on the gradient tool, let's select the paint bucket from the list. Now click on the image and you should see gray color over the canvas. Now on the right go over to opacity and lower the value to 85. Next, select the crop tool from the toolbar or by pressing C on the keyboard. We can now pull in the left and right sides to keep the puppy in the middle. Hit enter on your keyboard to confirm the crop. Then from the file menu, select export as and JPEG. We can change the file name into something more meaningful and hit save. Let's go back to Elementor and ignore my first version to upload this one in the media library. Like always, browse in your downloads folder and upload the image. Give it an alt text like always and select. Now the gray crop version works better in the background. To change the heading font size, select it and from style, tab open topography and change the size units to EM and use the slider to find a suitable size. Next, we can align the hero buttons to the center and also the phone number. The shape divider looks funny like this, so let's open the section settings and from style, open the style divider, bottom and use the sliders to bring the waves down. 
No, that's better. Going down the page, we can adjust the heading sizes to fit the screen better. From style and typography, 1.9 EM looks better, or 1.8. Let's copy the value. Scrolling down, we can adjust the next heading and paste in the same value, changing the units to EM. Center the button. Looks OK. Let's save our changes. The footer needs some work, so let's click on the ribbon and open the footer in the editor. Now let's go to Style tab and center the elements. Same with the bottom menu. If it doesn't work from style, the text editor settings are overriding them. Let's go to Content and remove the right alignment. Now it works, but it's also a good idea to make sure how the desktop layout looks like. On desktop, the menu moved also on the left, so let's change the alignment from the Style tab and move it on the right. Back in the mobile view, let's finish the footer by moving the site title in the middle and also the copyright text. It doesn't work, so let's first remove the alignment from the Content tab. We can first adjust it for desktop and then for mobile. Saving changes and scrolling back up. The layout looks OK for now, so we can exit the page from the top menu. From dashboard, let's open pages and check About Us page next. Let's change to Responsive View again and select Mobile Portrait. Looks OK. To make the layout consistent, let's change all the mobile headings to 1.8 EM. The team titles are now perhaps too big, so let's reduce the size for them as well. Let's say 1.5 EM. Next heading can also be 1.8. We can also zoom out to match the viewport to actual size of a phone to get a better idea. The illustration for this section can be either hidden from the advanced tab selecting responsive and hide on mobile. Or like this, simply make the image size smaller. Let's reduce the next heading to 1.8 and center the last button in the middle. Remember to update the changes and we can close this page. Then it's time to tackle services page, so let's open it from the pages view with Elementor. Open the responsive mode and select mobile. The hero looks OK, also the service descriptions. We can resize the heading, zoom out the viewport, and center the WhatsApp button. FAQ looks good, so this page is done. Save changes and close the tab. Now it's time to create a pop-up to encourage people to send us a message via a simple form. From the Templates menu, open pop-ups and click on the Add New pop-up button. Give your template a name and create template. Select two column layout and type in title to get the site title widget on the left column. Below, we can add one text editor. On the right, we can search for form and drop one on the right side. For the content, we can ask some help from ChatGPT. I'll give a prompt and copy the generated text to replace the placeholder. After it, we can add an additional line. Optionally, we can use a background by clicking on the section, and from Style tab, selecting the brush and clicking on the image. From before, we have this image that we didn't use, so we can use it here. Let's go to Background Overlay and change the color to Links Blue. Let's reduce the opacity, and now we can change the text color to white to have more contrast. From the bottom left settings, we can disable the Close button that stays over the name field. The users can still close the pop-up by clicking anywhere on the screen outside the pop-up. There's more options available in the form. We can change the labels and placeholders, make them required fields, and from Actions we can see that Elementor will collect the submissions with their details in its own database and send an email. Under Email, we can check that the address is correct, where we want to receive these messages, and then we can hit Publish. In Conditions, let's add one. Click on the entire site and select from the menu Singular and then the front page. Click Next and select After Inactivity, 30 seconds, and On-Page Exit Intent. 
Next, here's more options, but we don't need these. Save and close. Before testing it, let's also adjust the mobile layout. Change the responsive view and check how it looks. Click on the column and change the column width to 97 or 96% to make the fields fit on the screen. Now we can save the changes, exit the page and visit the site to see it in action. Actually, I noticed on my phone that the text for the map button was blue, so I'll enter the editor first and go into responsive mode. The color is not viewport specific, by the way. I'll change it to white to make sure it works and hit update. It's a good idea that you check your website on your phone as well. To avoid any possible design flaw, I'll set the white text color also for the other two buttons. Yep, it looks great. If some text looks big, zoom out to match your phone size and check again. Maybe it's not too big after all. The mobile version is now ready so we can enter the site settings from the top menu and open site identity. We can change the site name or description here, but we're here to create a fab icon, the small icon that is displayed on the browser tab before the page title, like the default white blue WordPress icon. To create that, let's go to Playground AI and type in a prompt to create a small icon for our website. Let's start with something simple and give some negative prompts. Like so and hit generate. Perfect. This will work great as a fav icon. Let's save it from actions and open the page to pop open the media library and upload the new image. Give an alt text and hit select. Let's tap update once and then reload the page to see if it works. As you can see, the WordPress icon changed into our golden dog icon. Great. Now, some of our images are too big for the website, which makes the loading times longer on slower internet connections. To optimize this, let's open the plugins and type in Smush. Install and activate the plugin. Locate it on the left menu and open the settings to begin the setup. Here we can just click next to everything. Then the plugin will automatically scan the media library. Once done, scroll down to find the bulk smash. Scroll down to find the bulk smash button and smash that smash button. It takes a minute and that's all we need to do. The plugin is automatically resizing the images on the website. Next, we can open the media library again to remove any redundant images by clicking the delete permanently button. And we want to make sure that each image has something written on the alt text field. It can describe the photo and have some keywords related to your business. It can also match the image title. Once you have something for all or have deleted all the ones you don't need, we can open the home page again. I forgot that I'm using a deleted image as the background of the pop-up and the site logo has a weird border around it, so I'll go edit the pop-up from templates. Edit with Elementor. The image is still visible because WordPress didn't delete the image from the server, only from the media library. But that's a topic for another video. Let's add a heading and replace the site title with that to avoid showing the weird border. I'll also set another image to use as the background for the pop-up. We can change the display size to cover for a better look. Great. Next step is creating a cookie consent and privacy policy for the website. We can do them by installing compliance plugin. Select compliance with C, click install and activate. Follow the setup wizard and click next until we end the tour. Now let's pick a privacy policy that matches the region of the intended visitors of your website. For EU, select GDPR. For UK, I'll use here the UK GDPR. For US, general privacy guidelines and so on. Save and continue. Cookie policy will be generated by this plugin, but in the free version, we don't get the privacy statement. For that, we can ask ChatGPT for some help. Let's type in a prompt and copy the generated text. We need to create a new page for that. So click on the new menu and holding down control key, click page to open it on a new tab. 
Let's name it privacy statement. And in this case, we can paste the text here in the default editor. Edit the text to have correct details, add address, and give a date for the last update. If it looks good, click on publish and publish. Copy the page URL. Now, back in compliance, select custom URL for a privacy statement and paste in the link. Scroll down and move forward. Here we can give our details again, business name, address, country, email, and a phone number. Save and continue. Skipping ahead, cookie scan, yes. Save and continue. Select any statistic tracking tools if you plan to use them. Google Analytics or Google Tag Manager are very typical. However, we're not using any for now, so I'll select no. Scrolling down, if you plan to embed an Instagram feed or TikTok on the website, select them here. Also, advertising and comments. We're keeping it simple and choosing no. I would use the Legal Hub as this will suffice for now. Next, the plugin scans for cookie descriptions. All good, scroll down and save and continue. Same for service descriptions. Now we can finally create the cookie policy page, so click on the Create Missing Pages and continue. We don't need to link anything here, so we'll skip ahead. Save and style cookie banner to finish the wizard. Here we can see the cookie banner on the right corner of the page. And on the page, we have options how the banner looks and where it appears. Let's save these settings once more and go to visit the page to see how it looks. On the new privacy page tab, we can also click view page to take a look. Now, I'm not an expert in privacy policies, so this is a good starting point, but consult an expert if you have any doubts later. Moving on, let's open the homepage and click on edit the footer from the Elementor menu. On the footer, let's add the missing link to the two new pages we created. From the pages view in the dashboard, you can right click the view button and copy the address. Paste in the link by clicking on the pen button and leave only the slash privacy dash statement. Copy also the link for the cookie policy. You'll see the slug also from the quick edit view and paste it in. Then we can move the default draft privacy policy to bin, also the empty elementor draft, and then the sample page. Then if there's a sample post, delete it the same way. Same in the comments. From plugins, we can delete Hello Dolly and then enable the auto updates for the active plugins as this makes maintaining the site easier. We can also update Amelia manually by clicking update now. And you know what? Congratulations. We have finished building the website. If you reached this point, well done. I'm sure you have learned a lot on the way. And there's of course still a lot to learn. And most importantly, if you were able to follow the course, now you have a fully functional website working for your business. Check my YouTube channel Screef for more videos to answer many of your questions and join the Discord server to develop your site further. While the website is now complete, please watch and follow the bonus video about making WordPress more resistant to hackers. That small step can save you a lot of headaches afterwards. I've had to deal with hacked websites for my clients so I learned the hard way. So let's do one more step and I'll see you on the next video.